Der US-Sprachwissenschaftler Noam Chomsky verkörpert nach dem Tod von Nelson Mandela eine der letzten noch lebenden herausragenden Persönlichkeiten des 20. Jahrhunderts. Er ist Professor für Linguistik am Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, in den USA und einer der weltweit bedeutendsten Intellektuellen der Gegenwart. Wir unterstützen und solidarisieren uns mit den folgenden Äußerungen, die Norm Chomsky in den vergangenen Monaten wiederholt gemacht hat. Der US-Krieg gegen den Terror ist die massivste Terrorkampagne in der Geschichte und die Invasion im Irak war das schlimmste Verbrechen in der jüngsten Geschichte, weswegen ich George W. Bush und Tony Blair vor dem Internationalen Gerichtshof stehen sehen möchte. Obama müsste dorthin wegen seines Terrorkriegs. Die USA funktionieren nach dem Mafia-Prinzip. Wenn man Präsident Obama vor einen internationalen Gerichtshof stellen würde, sollte man ihn dafür anklagen, dass er eine der extremsten Terroristenkampagnen der Welt organisiert hat. Bradley Manning sollte als Held verehrt werden. Er tut das, was ein ehrbarer Bürger tun sollte. Die Bevölkerung wissen zu lassen, was diejenigen, die uns beherrschen, tun. Die Herrschenden wollen das natürlich geheim halten. Edward Snowden hat das getan, was jeder Bürger tun sollte. Er hat uns mitgeteilt, was die Regierung tut. Man muss gegen die NSA angehen, sonst macht man sich zu ihrem Komplizen. Obama ist verantwortlich für diese Terrorkampagnen. Zuallererst muss mal deutlich gesagt werden, dass das Terrorkampagnen sind. Da sollten wir uns nichts vormachen. Das Drohnenprogramm ist eine groß angelegte internationale Terrorkampagne. Obama und seine Berater halten jeden Dienstag den sogenannten Terrordienstag ab. Telling uh, Americans what the government is doing. 
that's what's supposed to happen. The governments, as I mentioned before, always plead security, no matter what's going on. Uh, the reflexive defense is security. But uh, uh, anyone who's looked at, first of all, you take a look at what he exposed, uh, at least anything that's been published, is not any kind of a threat to security, with one exception, the security of the government from its own population. And in fact, if you look at anyone who's spent any time pouring through declassified records, and I have, I'm sure many of you have, you find that overwhelmingly the security is the security of the state from its own population. And that's why things have to be kept secret. Um, this, there are some cases where there's authentic security concerns, but they're pretty limited. Uh, the plea of the U.S. government in this case for the surveillance and so on is that it's security against terror. But at the very same moment, the U.S. policy is designed in a way to increase terror. I mean, the U.S. itself is carrying out the uh, most awesome international terrorist campaign ever, I suppose, the Grown Special Forces campaign. That's a major terrorist campaign all over the world. And it's also generating terrorists. So you can't seriously, on the one hand, be not only carrying out massive terror, but even generating potential terrorists against yourself and claim that we have to have massive surveillance to protect ourselves against terror. They say it was important for fighting terrorism. Well, if, and if we had anything like a free press, uh, there would be headlines saying this is a bad joke. The Obama administration is dedicated to increasing terrorism. In fact, it's doing it all over the world. Uh, Obama is running the big, first of all, he's running the biggest terrorist operation in, that exists, maybe in history, uh, the drone assassination campaigns, which are just part of it. There's special forces operations and so on. All of these operations are, they are terror operations. And in fact, villages, regions, countries are terrorized by these operations. Is there any point in international law when countries like the United States, Israel and the UK can just ignore it? It could change if popular movements within the powerful states compel the governments to stop being rogue states. By now the world is considerably more diverse. The US is still by far the most powerful state, uh, but it, it it can still uh, and does uh, pronounce the principles of 1945, but it's much harder to implement them, and often it can't. Uh, US power has diminished in increasingly in recent years. You could run through it, but it really starts in the late 40s. So one thing that can change is the international system. Uh, another and major factor has to be internal to the aggressive states. With regard to Israel, it's a different issue. Uh, Israel can do just as much as the U.S. allows it to do. So if the U.S. were to withdraw participation in Israel's crimes, it would have to stop.